So for most people, vlogging in public is about as comfortable as pooping in a public restroom. Why you'd want to do it, I have absolutely no idea. But if you're part of the rare breed of people that actually enjoys this, you're going to want the right gear. So today we're taking a look at the Canon 10 to 18 versus the Canon 18 to 55 to see which one is better for vlogging for you. Hey, what's up everyone? My name is Josh Winiarski and I'm a photographer and filmmaker here on YouTube as well as Instagram. And the topic of today's video is going to be vlogging lenses. We've got the 10 to 18 versus the 18 to 55. Now we're going to get into a ton of general specs like focus speed, image quality and all that stuff. But keep in mind this video is for vlogging. You know, this isn't a photography comparison. Might do that in a later video, but this is strictly the video features for run and gun vlogging. Personally, I'm a fan of real world tests versus just looking at specs online. So I took both lenses hiking, put them through a variety of tests. Here are the results. Okay, so the first thing I wanted to test was size and weight. Now, both lenses are pretty small, pretty lightweight. I don't know if you can tell, the 10 to 18 is a little bit shorter than the 18 to 55, but not by a whole lot. As far as weight goes, the 18 to 55 is 205 grams, while the 10 to 18 is 240 grams. So a little bit heavier, but both of these lenses are extremely light. Personally, I've vlogged with much bigger, much heavier lenses. They can really start fatiguing your arm. These are small, these are lightweight. They're both gonna get a point for this category. Next, let's talk build quality. And both lenses are gonna have full plastic construction, plastic bodies, plastic lens mounts. Now, there's nothing wrong with them. In everyday use, they're gonna hold up great, but vlogging can be a little rough. You know, you might go banging your lens against things or God forbid you drop it. They're built on the cheaper side, not bad, but they are pretty cheap. That being said, that's why these lenses are so light. They're built entirely out of plastic, which really helps with that weight. So I'm not gonna dock a point, but I'm definitely not gonna add one either. They've got okay build quality, but I'd really like to see at least a metal lens mount on the lenses. Next, let's talk stabilization, and both lenses are gonna have Canon's image stabilization built into the lens. Now, for all my tests, I made the assumption that you're gonna be vlogging on the widest focal length. If you bought the 10 to 18, you're probably gonna vlog on 10. If you bought the 18 to 55, you're almost for sure gonna vlog on 18. Okay, this is a stabilization test on the 18 to 55. Can it keep me smooth, stable, is this watchable footage or is it bumpy and jarring? Okay, and this is the stabilization test on the Canon 10 to 18. How does it look? We're walking the same path, same shoes, same camera. Is this more watchable? Does it smooth them out better? Especially with that wider focal length, it definitely should help. And then quite literally, I ran some more tests, meaning I ran down the trail with 10 millimeters and with 18 millimeters. Okay, now we're gonna do the stabilization test again while running. <laughs> okay, and now we're gonna try the 18 to 55 while running. In both situations, I personally like the look, the 10 to 18 millimeter lens a lot more. Realistically, the actual stabilization is probably pretty similar, but having 10 millimeters as such a wide focal length, it actually gets rid of those micro bumps and jitters when walking on a trail a lot better. While this was definitely an extreme test, 18 millimeters just felt too tight when you're walking and hitting little bumps with your feet, which kind of translate up your body. It kind of got jarring to look at the footage for too long. If you're looking for the most stable image you can get, I definitely recommend the 10 to 18 over the 18 to 55. Next, we've got image quality slash sharpness. Now I tried testing this outdoors, but the sun was setting, there were some clouds moving in front of it. I wasn't getting very consistent results, so I couldn't come to anything conclusive. So when I got home, I did a few studio tests in a controlled environment. Now admittedly, I couldn't get quite as much light as I would have liked on my face, but both lenses were shot indoors, the same lights, f5.6, ISO 500, this is what that looked like. So here's the 10 to 18 millimeter, and here's the 18 to 55, both at 18 millimeters just to make the results actually comparable. Now there wasn't a massive difference for video, but after punching in, it definitely looked like the 10 to 18 had a little bit sharper of an image. So it's gonna get a point for this category. All right, and the next category is gonna be 
low light. If you're out vlogging, you never really know how late you're going to be gone, where you're going to end up, where you're going to be. Having low light capabilities can be super useful. Unfortunately, one of the biggest downsides to the 10 to 18 is its minimum aperture is at 4.5, which frankly is not very good at all. And it gets even worse as you zoom into 18 millimeters, stopping down to f5.6. Compare that to the 18 to 55, which has an aperture of f3.5 at 18 millimeters, and that's a pretty big difference. Now, at their widest aperture, the 18 to 55 isn't quite as ahead. But neither are really low light lenses. If I had to pick a winner, it'd definitely be the 18 to 55 though. Up next, we've got focal range slash versatility. One giant downside to the 10 to 18 though is it's not very good for pointing things out or really doing anything but capturing super wide shots and vlogging. So this is kind of the hey, look over there test. So that bench isn't something very cool, but as you can see, even zooming in doesn't really emphasize it. Okay, so now let's try it on the 18 to 55. Hey, look over there. One of the nice things is when you can go all the way to 55 millimeters, you can do a lot more with just one lens. You know, you can use it for that B-roll, you can point things out. You're not so locked in on just the wide shot. So as you saw, another downside to the 10 to 18 is you can't really zoom in on things or emphasize them. For the most part, you're kind of stuck with just the wide shot. Now, if you strictly just vlog, you just film yourself, or you have other lenses and you're willing to bring them both on your vlogs, you can get around this, but I'm gonna give the point to the 18 to 55 for being more of an all-arounder in this category. Okay, and next let's talk field of view, and this is a little bit biased. The obvious winner is gonna be the 10 to 18 for it's got a wider field of view. So right now I'm at 10 millimeters, and you feel like a little bit more a part of me, I guess is the best way to put it. So you can see everything around me, you can see me, you can see my hand, I'm very expressive with my hands. It's more like someone else is filming me. Meanwhile, at 18 millimeters, you don't get as much of a sense of where I'm at, you're a little bit tighter on my face, and you honestly can't even see that my hand is actually flailing right now while I talk to make my points more clear. See, they don't sound all that different, but this is 18 millimeters, this is 10 millimeters, so it's actually a massive difference. Now, this is a little bit subjective because some people might not like the look of 10 millimeters for vlogging, others might not like the look of 18 millimeters for vlogging. The reason I say the 10 to 18 has the better field of view for vlogging is simply because 10 millimeters might be a little wide for some people, 18 millimeters is kind of you know, as close as you'd really want to get to your face, but you've got everything in between. So you could go 10 millimeters, 12 millimeters, 14 millimeters, 16 millimeters or 18 millimeters so you can kind of customize it to your liking but what about distortion one of the most obvious downsides to shooting at 10 millimeters or 12 millimeters is you're gonna get some distortion of your face okay and we'll call this the distortion test is there much distortion as i move around with this lens now we're at 10 millimeters how much distortion is here. The 18 to 55 really doesn't have any distortion. It's just not quite wide enough for that. 10 millimeters on the other hand, if you get it close to your face, you're gonna get some crazy looks. It can't really be avoided. That's just part of shooting at 10, 11, 12 millimeters, but it gets pretty wacky. I mean, I wouldn't really wanna watch a vlog if someone looked like this, kinda creepy. Now this is obviously only a problem. If you're shooting at 10 millimeters or close to that and you get super close to the lens, but the point's gonna go to the 18 to 55 because it's just something you don't have to worry about. Next, let's talk motor noise, and thankfully for you, both of these have Canon's STM motor. They're pretty much silent. You'll never pick up the sound. The motor focusing with a shotgun microphone or even a built-in, so they're both getting a point there. Uh, not much else to say. Okay, so let's compare the autofocus on both lenses. Can it follow my face? Whoa. Can it follow my face? Is it smooth? As far as autofocus goes, again, pretty similar results. Tested it on my hike, tested it again in the studio. Uh, you know, they're pretty comparable. And this is to be expected. They both have the same motor, but they're both gonna get a point for that round. They're smooth, they're silent, they're fast, they're accurate. They get the job done. Next, we've got the B-roll test. 
For those of you who don't know, B-roll is just footage placed on top of your main story to kind of help tell it better and to enhance it visually. In theory, the 10 to 18 is terrible for this. I mean, here's a picture of me just shooting a leaf at 18 millimeters at 5.6. It doesn't do a very good job isolating it. Switching over to the 18 to 55 though, we've got 55 millimeters at f5.6, shooting the same leaf. It really isolates the subject, compresses the background, and blurs it out. It just looks a lot better. But one thing that's kind of cool and maybe not a lot of people know is the 10 to 18 can actually get you some gimbal like looking shots handheld, which is super cool. The reason being when you're shooting at 10 millimeters, not only does it smooth out your handheld footage, but it actually exaggerates the movements because it's such a wide focal length. Even moving just a couple feet with your hands looks like you're just flying around the world. Take this clip for instance, straight at a camera, it looks pretty cool. Taking it a step further though, we can slow it down to 50%, add a warp stabilizer in post, and it looks like a gimbal. It looks like there's no way someone was hand holding this shot but I didn't even have to take a step. It's just leaning into it, nice and smooth. It's a pretty cool thing to be able to do. You know, you can capture mountains or trees or anything like that. Very useful for B-roll. Next, let's talk price. The 18 to 55 is listed for $250 on Canon's website. Under no circumstance should you actually pay that. If you want the 18 to 55, it's normally only $100 extra to just get it with your camera, or if you shop around on places like Amazon, you can find it new for well under $150. Meanwhile, the 10 to 18 is about $280, and you can't really get it cheaper with your camera. It's pretty much stuck at that price. Point here is gonna go to the 18 to 55 because it is cheaper, it is more affordable, but neither of them are crazy expensive. Okay, so if you've made it this far, your head might be spinning. Let's have a quick recap. So both lenses are light, they're plastic, STM motors, good autofocus, and they've got pros and cons for B-roll. So why would you go with the 10 to 18? Well, it is gonna be more stable thanks to that wider focal range. It can get more in frame, so if you're with other people or you wanna show off where you're at, you can do that better. And it's gonna give you a little bit sharper of an image. Why would you go with the 18 to 55? Well, it's cheaper, a little bit more of an all arounder. You know, you can go from 18 millimeters all the way to 55, so that's super cool. And it's gonna have better low light. It's not a bad option if you just wanna carry one lens and get the job done. So there you go. Obviously not a perfect, flawless comparison, but hopefully it's helped you understand the pros and cons of each lens to help you make a more informed purchase decision. Personally, I like the look of the 10 to 18 more for just walking and talking with the camera, but I couldn't use it to make a whole video. I would definitely have to carry another lens. I don't like the 18 to 55 as much for the walking and talking part, but it's definitely more of the all arounder. Anyways, that's it for me. Question of the day, which lens would you pick? Let me know in the comment section down below and have fun, stay creative, and I'll see you all in the next one.